Hi, in this video I want to talk about friendships and science collaborations. Does one always lead to the other or not? And if not, why not? So I think we can all agree that collaborations make everything better in science. I think they lead to better science, they increase your output and they increase your happiness, basically your satisfaction with your job through the friendships that you make. At least this is the case for me, but I think this will be the case for virtually everybody else as well. Now, not all collaborations lead to friendships. And you may have science-related friends with whom you do not collaborate. So it's clearly not a one-to-one -one relationship. So in this video, I want to look at why this is so. So why are not all collaborators your friends? And also why not all your science friends are your collaborators? And why there is this difference? and what this means, because I think this can be very important for you to understand, to avoid disappointment and to have the wrong expectations. So first of all, why scientific collaborations may lead to friendship? Well, often we as scientists have a very deep connection with our field, we are passionate about a certain topic, and it's just great if somebody else feels the same way, because they completely get you. They understand why you're excited about a certain paper or why you are frustrated with a certain paper so they basically they get you and this shared passion for a topic and the shared expertise and the shared view of course that of course that creates a sort of bond and if everything else also falls into place that of course very naturally will develop into a true friendship that to me just means you enjoy talking to them you look forward to meeting them and you are just having a great time Another reason may simply be because you are attending the same meetings, you always bump into each other at the same, at workshops, <laughs> you are part of the same projects, for example, national level projects, and so you just see a lot of each other and therefore you may discover that you really like the other person, get along with them well, have a great time chatting with them, and so therefore that is also a connection that can develop into a friendship just because you spend time with each other. And finally, people that you collaborate with you typically respect for their knowledge, for their skills, for the expertise that they have that maybe you don't have and so they are complementary to your skills. And this sort of respect you have for somebody that is also a necessary precondition to develop a friendship. It doesn't have to, but it can. And it's based on mutual respect. Right, so those are all the various reasons why a scientific collaboration can lead to a friendship. But there are also several reasons why this may not happen. And here are some of them. Some people just like to maintain a clear boundary between their professional life and their private life. And this is a personal choice that you make at some point, either consciously or, or subconsciously. Yeah, I've had many conversations with people on this topic over time. And um, I think there's advantages to both. Huh? So there is advantages to basically not closing yourself off to people that you feel professionally close to, to also become friends. Um, this can even be in your lab or in your, in your immediate environment, but it can be mean anywhere, also if they're in another part of the world. Uh, but there's also very good reasons why you would not want to do that. For example, you know, if in, um, at some point you have to make a hard decision about hiring or whatever, and if that uh, friendship then uh, gets in the way or gets into conflict with that decision and can become um, a source of awkwardness and discontent. And so, you know, there's various reasons why people make a decision to do one or the other. So I am generally more in the friend <laughs> realm of um, interactions, but other people really don't see it this way. And this is important to know and it's important to understand that people differ in this aspect. There are for sure also very many cultural differences, but not just that, also just people even in the same place will be different. They will handle this in a different way and this is fine and should be respected. Now this means you can have a very productive collaboration with somebody, maybe even in the long term, but you don't really become friends. I mean, for me, this would be a bit hard to imagine. I mean, if it's a really true, deep, meaningful collaboration over many years, not just, you know, part of the same consortium or something, um, to then not become friends, I think it would be slightly odd. But maybe it could happen. Well, the second point is obviously personality. So you can maybe 
quite productively work with somebody because they have complementary skills to yours. You, you need maybe their expertise to really take your work to the next level. But in terms of personality, they wouldn't be the people you hang out with in your spare time. And so then, of course, that collaboration, maybe it's even, maybe can even be a fairly close collaboration. It would not develop into a friendship. Again, if that collaboration is really intense, it would be hard for me to work with somebody that I don't also like. But I guess people are also different in that respect and therefore this ne doesn't necessarily lead to a friendship in all cases. Another point could be goal or project orientation. This is similar to the point I just made, but basically sometimes you are thrown together in a project and you actually do see each other quite a lot while the project is on, but then the project after two or three years is maybe over. And then that goal that brought you together has basically ceased to exist. And then if this hasn't developed into a very close friendship, it won't afterwards because then you don't see each other anymore. So when this collaborative link is rather sort of um, more weak, you're part of a consortium, maybe you don't work that deeply with each other um, and it's more a fleeting connection maybe one of very many in a project, if it's a big consortium, then that also doesn't necessarily lead to a friendship in the end. A big one is time. Um, I don't mean making the time <laughs> to um, maintain these connections or make these connections in the first place. Of course, this could also be consideration, but I mean time in terms of time of appointment. So very many times contracts in the science realm are rather short-term contracts, like two years and three years. So people are, you maybe are in a lab together with somebody and then this person, after two years or so, or sometimes even sooner, they leave again and that may simply not allow enough time to make a deep connection with somebody and have a friendship with them. Um, or maybe you even discovered rather late that you actually get along quite well and then the person is already sort of on its way, on her way or his way to, um, to another appointment. So that will then of course also not work out in terms of time. And that is maybe sort of a more of a peculiarity about the sign system that very often there are these short-term contracts and therefore you're thrown together for a short period of time. And if then the connection isn't made to stick, basically, then it will just fall apart or not even form in the first place. Another possible reason is maybe competition. You know, you may not directly compete for resources or money, maybe because if you're in different countries, but maybe you compete for prestige or recognition or maybe even for the best students or staff. And therefore you may work with each other, but you may always that have in the back of, may have that in the back of your mind always that you're in actually competitors. For me, it hasn't really played a role because I think if, if, if I think somebody is a competitor, maybe I wouldn't work with them in the first place. Maybe I would. But then I wouldn't be friends. I don't know. I don't think this competitor, non-competitor thing really plays a big role with me. But it can be uh, for other people. And so this is also something that could prevent a friendship from forming if there is in the end always in the back of your mind, well, we are actually, you know, doing similar things and we're competing for, the, for that same goal, for example. I can imagine that then can prevent collaboration and friendship, even though people might be working together because they're working on the same area. Otherwise, they couldn't compete. That is a rather sad reason, um, and you should overcome it as much as possible, but it is definitely real. So there's definitely collaboration without friendship. There's friendship without collaboration. But can there be really meaningful, deep, long-term collaborations with somebody without developing a friendship? You know, I guess there could be if you're committed to the same goals, if the same things are important to you, if you are communica communicating effectively, if you have complementary skills and expertise, if you respect each other professionally, maybe you really can have a true meaningful long term over many years collaborative link, but still not really become friends. A lot of this may also depend on your definition of friendship. Huh? That may vary culturally, it very much also varies on a personality type level, what you would call a friend, maybe I wouldn't and vice versa. What my criterion is, do I really look forward to spending time with them at a, at a meeting or in the evenings of the meeting or um, do I really look forward to interacting with them on a paper? Um, do I find them funny? 
um, do I want to spend more time with them, then I would call them a friend. But you might not. Anyway, so I uh, hope you found that useful. I think we don't very often talk about this because it's well, fairly personal. Actually very personal. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it's also real and it's meaningful. These are meaningful connections with people that you make as part of your um, scientific work. And I think it is important to step back every once in a while and consider what are these links really like and what do they mean to me and how important are they in my life. So I hope you have good scientific friends. Make more in the future. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.